Hey everyone, holy crap, look at my past videos. Just type in RCMP where you see that little magnifying glass on my YouTube channel so you can search my actual videos and, and you'll see that, like I say, as soon as you type in RCMP, you'll see one of my videos show up where, yeah, they've already greatly reduced the standards in regards to their hiring practices to recruit people that want to be the mindless order followers for the political or ruling class in this country. Yeah, I recognize that at least that's kind of a, a thing in Canada that I'm very much appreciative of when I see that less and less people want to go into politics or become mindless order followers for the ruling class. I, I'm very much appreciative of that fact because it tells me that at least a substantial portion of the population don't want to have nothing to do with that kind of top-down authoritarianism, with that kind of corruption. Because if you look at there today, like I say, if you're if you're a police officer, I mean, sure, in the historical aspects of precedent, like in the, in the beginnings of our countries, especially when they were considered peace officers and they only had to enforce laws that actually entailed or encompassed an actual victim being involved. Now today, now all the police today, when you sign up to become a police officer, you're signing up that you're going to carry out whatever political edicts or mandates that your masters put forth or present or legislate. And we're seeing it today. Look at how many police officers are out there today destroying the lives of countless Canadians based on nothing except political edicts and mandates. No victims, just, oh, we don't like what these people are doing. It's politically incorrect. Or, ooh, it's potentially scary. Or it goes against what our owners deem allowable. Like I said, there, and there's probably a lot of cops out there, whether they're the RCMP or even provincial jurisdiction police forces i'm sure there's a lot of them out there at this point in time especially some of the older ones that probably hang their head in shame and have a lot of guilt for what they've done over the course of their careers or their or their jobs because they i mean if they have any morality or compassion residing with inside them they they know that they've caused a lot of harm a lot of pain to a lot of people by following out the mandates, orders, and edicts of their political masters, of their authoritarian political masters. Headline, CBC News Politics. Short-staffed RCMP look at lifting ban on recruits with criminal records. Credit checks, aptitude tests also on the chopping block as force deals with staffing crunch. This being reported by Catherine Tunney, December 22nd, 2018. <laughs> so, the, the RCMP are so desperate to find recruits, like I say, new order followers, new mindless order followers, that in, in my past video I covered the fact that you don't even have to be a citizen of Canada anymore to become a Royal Canadian Mounted Police Officer. You don't even have to be a Canadian citizen to do that, nor do you have to meet a particular level of fitness or physical activity anymore. They Like all those bars have been lowered dramatically and drastically to the point where they basically uh, if you got a pulse and you could breathe, you meet enough physical requirements and standards to become an officer this day. And like I say, even if you're not a full-on Canadian citizen, well, that's okay too. And I thought that bar was already low enough, but no, it's not low enough apparently. It's, it's still not enticing enough people to want to become these mindless order followers for the room class. So they're lowering the bar much, much, much lower to the tune of where... Got a criminal record? Yeah, that's fine. Hey, you're going to be one of those people that are going to be active and play out this position that you're you're the good people in society and you're just there to enforce laws against the bad people in society. Meanwhile, you're apparently a lawbreaker yourself. You're a criminal yourself. So you're going to have criminal patrolling criminals or out there patrolling so they can create even more criminals. Right? More people prop up the ranks or increase the ranks, right? But in addition to the criminal record, you can have a criminal record. You can be a criminal and be a cop, which actually that kind of makes sense if you think about it. Because cops really, the very job description of what they do, it, it is, they are criminals. I mean, they steal from people all the time. Right? They use physical violence towards people that aren't acting out violent themselves, right? They, they do, they, they put them in cages, they lock them up. I mean, cops really, for the most part, because they follow the orders and edicts of their political masters, they are criminals inherently by their very nature but now even credit checks so even if they're economically responsible that don't matter anymore aptitude tests eh, who gives a shit if they know how to do their job right or if they're competent in any way hey 
Why do we need competent people? All we really need, and this is the kind of the mindset of their authoritarian political masters, actually, tell you the truth, all we really need are people that are conformist or obedient enough to just carry out our political mandates or eating. So no wonder they're lowering the bar. And that's only going to propagate the continuation of that race to the bottom in this country that, like I say, we're already fast-tracked. And I, I don't even know, are we almost there? We must be damn close to getting to that point. The RCMP are taking a radical look at their recruitment strategy and could ditch credit checks and the ban on recruits with criminal backgrounds to help them rebuild their depleted ranks. The Mounties have been plagued by staffing challenges in recent years and are looking at how to convince more women and visible minorities to don the red surge. I mean, this is kind of an insult towards women, if you think of what they're suggesting. They're constantly lowering the standards or the bar, and now they're looking to recruit women and visible minorities. Is, are you suggesting that you have to lower the bar because women and visible minorities are, are, are so beneath you? Is that, is that what they're suggesting here? Is that what the RCMP is suggesting? <laughs> what the hell, folks? Like I say, that's the problem with political rhetoric, right? It's, it's No matter how you look at it, it's always going to be an insult to someone because, well, it's political rhetoric. An internal document obtained through access to information suggests credit checks, the criminal background ban, the two-hour aptitude test, and long stints at the training depot could all be eliminated from the hiring process as senior ranks try to make a career as a Mountie more attractive. The document notes that some of the mandatory requirements can create barriers for communities the force wants to attract, including groups more likely to have contact with the criminal justice system. <laughs> it asks, are we tuned in or tone deaf? The review exercise is the brainchild of Vaughn Charlton, the director of Gender-Based Analysis Plus with the RCMP. She was brought over from Status of Woman Canada in April 2017 at the request of then-Commissioner Bob Paulson and tasked with focusing on gender and inclusion within the force. We need to stop assuming there's only one kind of person who belongs in policing, she said in an interview with CBC News. If we're going to have mandatory requirements, we want to make sure we're not creating unintended barriers for reasons that really have nothing to do with whether you'd be a great police officer. For example, someone coming to the force later in life might not be as able to spend 26 weeks at the train depot in Saskatchewan. Credit checks, long part of the RCMP security screening process, can be a barrier for single parents or those who've been forced to take long-term leave, said Charlton. The document also flagged hearing and vision tests and long shifts as potential barriers and questioned the value of the aptitude screening assessment, which, among other things, tests memory, logic, judgment, and comprehension. I can definitely say we are looking at everything really serious, Charlton said. These are questions worth asking and thinking. Are they still relevant criteria in 2019? <laughs> I mean, think about this. And you can't help but point out the fact that it's SJW woman, right? <laughs> That's fucking doing it. Holy Christ. You know what? We're all going to get to the point at some point in time, folks. Like, you know, we're dealing with things like trying to deal with things in a manner that's not bringing the sex differences into the equation. But more and more people are actually starting to dip their toes in that water. And I think eventually we're all going to have to not just dip our toes. We're all going to have to dive straight into it, That straight into the fact that, yes, there are certain things that women should not be placed in positions of authority to control. And there are definitely certain places where men might not. Now, like I said, there could, there could be some overlap, some minor discrepancies, some outliers, some exceptions to the rule of the norm. But I mean, come on, folks, what are, what were we seeing out here today? Is placing women in these positions of authority, in these, especially in these particular things when you're talking about law enforcement, holy fuck. I mean, come on, that's just, that's, that's not a thing that women seem to be good at, right? Law enforcement, being the head of the household, being the one that sets the rules, that's 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 you know, using logic and reason, common sense, being moral and compassionate. Like once again, we're seeing out there that well, men have failed in the past too. That's why I guess women now are stepping up the plate, and they're now they're becoming the authoritarian. So so men's failures for 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 finding some kind of common sense middle ground. Although I think they were getting much much closer to getting to that point, especially post enlightenment era. But once again, look. Well, Women have now taken that torch and run so far with it that the fucking light is so far away that we're now in the darkness again. 
I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how to even deal with this stuff going forward because we shouldn't break this down to the division of the sexes. I sure as shit don't be one of those, don't want to be one of those people that break this down into the sexes. But I also have to acknowledge and recognize the reality of the world that I currently live in and function within. I mean, um, what what else really needs to be said at this point in time, folks? I think. Well, if you're just watching this one video, yeah, there's lots I, more I have to say. Yeah, watch my 750 plus videos, and you'll see I've got tons to say about a lot of things, a lot of issues. But as far as this whole stuff goes, yeah, what else do I really have to say? Like I say, this, this, like we're all going to have to confront this at some point in time, folks. You can't just keep kicking the can down the road and thinking that things are going to get better without putting some actual work or effort into creating an atmosphere where things will be much better going forward magic doesn't exist as far as i know fairies or genies don't exist so we we have no way to make magic overturn what the hell is happening no we have to deal with that ourselves we got to put on our big boy and girl pants and start really dealing with these things seriously it's a Canadian libertarian and i love liberty